Our guest today joins us with almost 20 years experience in the fitness industry, starting as a PT slash fitness coach in the early 2000s, eventually working up to a regional manager position with Fitness First. In 2012, he moved into his first senior role as head of product and retail with Total Fitness. Throughout this time, project managing multi-million pound gym refurbs, launched one of the UK's first leisure specific apps, as well as being part of industry think tanks and fulfilling consultancy roles. He now finds himself working as head of product for JD Gyms. We give you Mr. Craig Battersby. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. How are you doing? Yes, I'm good. You? Yeah, very good. Very good. Thanks for the long intro. I know, long yeah. intro. <laughs> to be fair, it, it did take me a while to trim it down. There was quite a lot in there, so we, we've, we've not done yeah. getting that in in about five Mate, I'm surprised you did that in one take, to be fair. Nah. Decent, isn't it? It's <laughs> <laughs> we, normally trip, we normally trip up, to be fair, but now that's good. Um, how are yeah, you? Good. Things? Yeah. You obviously mentioned just Very before we mentioned just before we came on about your your new arrival. So how's all of that been going? Treating you through life? Yeah, do you know what? You know what? It's it's been a it's been an interesting couple of months. You know, it's been a little bit bittersweet for me, really. So obviously we've you know everything that's going on at the moment, you know, all the clubs being closed, and you know, a lot of my. A lot of people that I uh, have sort of come across over the, the past sort of 10, 15 years are, are kind of, you know, in a bit of a bit of upheaval in terms of the businesses and what they're doing. Um, but upside, I've had a, my little boy came along on the 14th of April. So I've kind of, uh, you know, I've, I've not stopped. You know, I've, I've kind of, if anything, been really positive about enjoying the time. Um, you know, still trying to help a couple of people along the way of kind of uh, what they can do to, to be ready when we when we get back open. But yeah, do you know what? I, I, I can't complain. You know, nobody ever really gets that time to spend with, uh, with the little ones, do they? You know, it's sort yeah. of two weeks yeah. back in the car, back on the on the road. So it's yeah, been, uh, yeah, it's been really, really good. Really good. good. Really well, good. we were saying the other day, weren't we? Um, to be fair, Mark, just sometimes you feel a little bit guilty about saying that sort of thing because you, you know that other people aren't necessarily going through the greatest of time at the moment. But it is it is one of those where you, you're almost counting, counting your blessings if you're getting through it in there. A positive way so that's that's amazing um fatherhood yeah. nights making bottles all of that sort of stuff treating you okay yeah mate i uh, i i i heard i described it this morning i said to a couple of guys it was uh it's like nappies naps and noisy nights that's pretty much <laughs> my look in autobiography that's, that's the, I, when i when i bring that out in the, the, the content's not very i'll be honest the content is <laughs> not great but uh title's brilliant the title's great so yeah, it's been yeah, it's been really good. It's been really good, and you know, like I say, it's it, it it's been a difficult time for a lot of people. And you know, you do feel a little bit guilty at times when people have asked me how I'm getting on, and uh, you know, I'm sad going, yeah, you know, things are great. You know, yeah, I, I've got a, a a role to go back to and a great business to walk back into, and you know, there's hundreds of people out there, especially in the in the PT world and the group exercise world, who you know have been struggling, have been having to adapt. You know the, the businesses to, to sort of hopefully get through the last next couple of months. But, you know, I, I'm hoping it's going to be quite a positive for a lot of people. You know, a lot of people are going to change the way they approach the business and things that they do. And, and you know, we would hope that out of the back end of that, they've got experiences that help them grow their businesses even more. So yeah, yeah, definitely. yeah it's been a really interesting. Yeah, definitely. That's that's probably one of the big things, isn't it? I think if anything, it's highlighted like gaps in people's businesses where they can provide an extra level of service or they can bring something that, that takes advantage of the technology that we've got because there's so much out there um, and, yeah. and very, very few people, especially in our industry, I do think we're quite reluctant at times to delve into that sort of thing. But people almost haven't, have a ch haven't had a choice now. I bet Zoom have made an absolute killing over these last few months, <laughs> So yeah, like you touched on there, the role that you're going back to, the company that you, you're working for now, we'll yeah. probably delve into that a little bit later on in a, in a bit more detail. But um, as we've alluded to in the introduction there, you, you've been through a lot, you've seen through a lot over the last 20 years by the sounds of it. So uh, if we kind of hand over to you and, and talk, uh, it'd be great to hear you talk through how you almost uh, moved through those, those different steps and, and getting into the senior sort of positions you're in now, if you can for us, mate. Yeah, but I, uh, you know what? I, I don't get to do this very often, to be honest. I um, I, I don't do very many interviews. I kind of, I, I'm more of a, you know, when when I do my own sort of personality profile, I'm, I'm a lot more of a, an introvert than most of my sort of colleagues in the in the industry. So I don't get to kind of do interviews very often, which means I don't get to look back very often, you know, and I don't get to look back and say, well, why, what, what, what got me here? How did I yeah. end up here? Um, so it's really interesting. You know, once we've spoken, we've kind of a uh, 
you know, decided we were going to set the date and, and have a chat for me to look back and think, well, how the hell did I end up here, actually? Yeah. You know, because, you know, things, things do happen. You get away with yourself. And, you know, before you know it, you're kind of, you are where you are. And then you're wondering yeah. what's happened. So, um, you know, I, I, I think I've got a quite a stereotypical sort of bringing in the industry, if you will. You know, I started off sort of uh, within the sort of fitness instructor PT role. Um, you know, back in the day, you know, uh, paying my way through university, you know, gaining my sports science degree and then thinking, actually, what do I want to do now? You know, the plan was always work with athletes. You know, everyone's plan in yeah. sports science is work with athletes. And then you yeah. end up working in, in Sports Direct or in, you know, <laughs> a, a retail shop around the corner thinking, well, that was a 15 grand well spent. So, um, but the, the plan was always to, to work with athletes, but I always paid my way through that with gym jobs and PC jobs and you know, it just felt natural for me to move into, um, you know, more of a, a sort of management role. So I did work in a couple of independent um, businesses. You know, I was managing gym floors. I was still PTing at the same time. Um, you know, and I was kind of learning my trade, if you will, you know, putting the hours in, understanding what it's like working on a gym floor, you know, understanding what it's like to, you know, close a gym at 11 o'clock at night and be back at there at 6 in the morning, you know, putting the, the, the sort of the, the hard hours in. Um, and uh, you the, know, glo the glory days we tend to call those the glory days. Is that what we call it? The glory days. Yeah, it yeah. Feel like I, a glory day, mate. It, I'll be honest. No, yeah, definitely not at the time. It didn't feel like it, did it? Yeah. To be fair, mate, been... I, 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 used, I remember getting the rotor, and every month we'd get a rotor, and every single one I was on the Sunday morning early at literally oh. half seven, and I was nice. thinking. I'm 19, 20 years old, and I literally have no life because I'm, <laughs> I'm up all opening gyms at the half seven on Sunday mornings. So. Um, but yeah, it was a, it was you know a good few years doing that, and then really my, my my sort of first foray into the commercial environment was with Fitness First, um, and I remember sort of uh, you know meeting the, the uh, sort of one of the, the general managers there and having a good interview and having a chat and thinking you know what there's there's so much more to this this industry than than I probably know at the moment, um, and I remember there's a, there's two things that stick out to me in terms of you know my what kind of shaped my my sort of persona and the way I see things. And the first one was, you know, one of the first things we did within Fitness First back in, in sort of uh, when I started there, was we did a sort of insights profiling yeah. and we started to look at, you know, different types of people. And back then it was in the guise of a sales environment. You know, it was in the guise of, you know, if you've got this person in front of you, how do you sell to them? How do you talk to them? You know, what kind of thing is going to get you the, the, the signature on the dotted line and the bank details at the end of it? Um, and then I, Instantly, we was really sort of fascinated with insights and fascinated with what made people make the decisions they make, you know, and how you can influence people's decisions in a in a positive way, not so much in a manipulative way, but how you can really help them make positive decisions. And that really, really triggered a, a fascination with me that's kind of stuck with me for, 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 well, pretty much throughout my career. You know, I'm constantly looking at, at kind of, you know, why do people do what they do? Why do people join? our business why do they leave our business why do people you know flip flop in and out of the industry yeah. you know what yeah. is it that makes people peak in january and then not be there in march you know all these sort of questions are, are real big drivers um for me personally in terms of kind of what what gets me out of bed in the morning so that was the, the first thing that, that really really got me into sort of uh you know really wanting to be part of the industry not just flip flopping around and, and kind of thinking you know it, it'll, it'll be okay until the, the next you know, the next pro sports job comes yeah. around the corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we, 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 funnily enough, we, we talk about insights quite a lot, don't we, Mark? And yeah. I think that, that gives you, that gives you like a real good insight into personality types. Like, because yeah. for, for PTs, like you've said there, knowing the sorts of personalities you're going to be working with and how they might react to the, the information that you're coming across. And then the managers that we have listening to, to the podcast, they take that away as well and go and implement that with their teams. And I think those big questions that you've asked there are, are really, really, really great um, examples of us trying to be more curious and understand the behaviours of people yeah. that we work with and how we can help to support them better to get the results they want. Whether I, think that's that's the, I think that's the key, mate, is like understanding exactly how or what makes them tick and how to manage them and how to motivate and coach them, uh, which, which is something that all three of us is what we really do focus on a lot of, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Do you know what? Do you know what's really what's always really fascinated me is is people's perception mm. of exercise and people's perception of the gym. You know, it's there's three of us on on this this call now, and, and each of us have a you know an idea of what it is to be 
a member of a gym what it is yeah. to, to sort of structure a routine and structure an exercise into your life. What's always fascinated me is actually when, when you're in that bubble and that echo chamber of, um, you know, the people that you surround yourself with, what you don't see is the, you know, the, the 80, 90% of the population that don't exercise, mm. that yeah. don't, aren't members of gyms and what they think about it. Um, and, you know, it's always, always fascinated me to think, actually, what do they think? And a real good go-to has always been my dad. You know, I'll always go to my dad and I'll ask him questions and I'll say, you know what? I was thinking about doing this and he always gives me the, you know, never trained in his life, you know, <laughs> smoker, you know, worked in, in sort of manufacturing, always gives me the, the honest answer that grounds me, you know, and it, he always goes, well, what the bloody are you doing that for? You know, everyone <laughs> listens to like this. And it's, yeah. you know, it's fantastic that, that, that you, when you can get that level of perspective on, on business, you know, because sometimes, you know, we, we do as, as sort of, you know, as personal trainers or as, you know, managers or whatever we, we are in the industry, we do surround ourselves with, you know, that bubble that yeah. uh, almost do act like an echo chamber, you know, and you, yeah. you don't really see, you know, what, 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 what is what I'm doing? How is that perceived to the general public? You know, yeah. you know I remember back, you know, 20 years ago, every single personal trainer was topless on their, their leaflets. You know, they were all flexing on the leaflets. You know, they were... They, they, and you just thought, actually, you know, that's great for the 3% that want to look like that. But what about the yeah. 97% that that is absolutely scaring the life out of to get <laughs> yeah. that? 100%. Them. You know, so, yes, yeah, it's, it's really interesting that we've, I've seen that shift towards that in the industry, which is great. You know, we're moving towards a lot more experience-based and aesthetic-based, which I think is a great place to be. Um, and, yeah, it's, I think, been a, it's been interesting. I think that's probably quite a good takeaway, actually, for, for any PTs that are jumping on, because... Um, even for us, the, the PTs that we, we work with, we mentor, etc., we we tend to, to get them to go and survey their, their audiences and, and go and do market yeah. research with the people that they want to work with and, and who they're targeting, which is great. But actually, having a chat with your old man or, or your mom who's never trained in their life and, and has a completely different perception of, of what it is that we're trying to do is going to give you a completely different view on, on what it is you're trying. And I suppose you can almost then test the waters with, Right. This is this is how I'm going to try and attract these sort this sort of demographic. How would you respond to that? What what's your thoughts on on this that I'm putting together? And and like you say, then that's going to give the the PT or or the business whatever area it is that they're they're working in a, a another um, layer, I suppose, to the quality of, of marketing content they're putting out there. So, what so, it does as well, mate, it makes them, it makes them think like how how the three of us were just talking about thinking. It makes them think a little bit about insights before they even understand or know insights because they're starting to market. They're starting to have a look at client profiling a little bit and stuff, which then helps them massively with what their specialist area is, what they're keen with, what they're keen on, what excites them in types of training that they do. And it, it really gets them to focus on their ideal client and their market. And then they can start to target that and build a business off it and be happy and successful with who they're actually coaching instead of just doing what I did was take any and anybody on just to get some money. <laughs> That's what you do when yeah. you first start. Yeah, yeah. It, it the, definitely you know, is. The, the, the more interesting part of that, Martin, is it, not only does it make you profile other people, it makes you profile yourself, doesn't it? You know, it makes you yeah, look at yourself and go, well, actually, what do I want? You know, too many trainers come in into, you know, the ones that I've been spoken to that are fresh in the industry with these ideas of what they want to do and who they want to talk to and, you know, how they want to build a business. And they don't really know themselves yet. You know, they yeah. don't really know what kind of personality they are to be able to understand what personality they're going to be able to speak to easily. So it makes you ask them questions of yourself, which I think is a really, a really, really positive, um, a really positive first step for any trainer is, is you know, understand yourself and then you can yeah. start to understand others, you know? Yeah, definitely. Massive, massive. It's brand identity, isn't it? Ultimately, like it's, it, it's an age old phrase, but people buy from people. So if, if your brand is you and, and your identity and what you're offering, then most definite, definitely you're going to be struggling if you don't even understand what that is. Right. And, and I think because we, we are so um, focused sometimes in, in trying to people please when we were a lot younger and trying to fit in and, and that that's difficult then for people to cut through um, if they are trying to establish themselves in a business and you don't go through that and you level two and level three we touch on it all the time and yeah. and, and especially with the, the, the students that we deliver to it's like that they don't get that usually on their level three so it's massively important that they get given a bit of an insight as they come through um, because as you as you've rightfully said there, if 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 they're struggling with that, then it's going to be a bit of a barrier for them to even hit the ground running. So yeah, again, another 
another great shout, little nugget there. Cool. Um, so yeah, from there, they, they were your first two main points, weren't they, coming in? Um, yeah. So yes, I mean, well, the, the, obviously the first main point was insights, and we've obviously gone off on a on a, on a sort of tangent from there. Um, the second major thing that, that happened to me really was the first time I ever got P and L. Um, you know, if, if you know me, Martin, Martin, I can see him smiling there on the, on the video. He knows that I'm kind of, I, I do like detail and I, I do like a number and I like a statistic and I like to sort of see what's, what's going on within a, you know, a, a whole rather than a, a, a singular, you know. So I do like to look at a, a P&L, for example, and say, right, as a whole, is my business healthy? Not, am I happy with, because actually X is working well and Y is working well. Um, and I'm just going to focus on those, looking at the whole. And I remember the, one of the first things that I looked at on a P&L was the retention figures. And I looked at the percentages on there and I thought, actually, I'm doing all this hard work at the front end and I'm losing, you know, X percentage of people every single month. And I remember thinking about that, thinking, you know, I, I kind of dwelled on that for, for a while. And, you know, I still do to this day kind of dwell on those retention um, sort of percentages and think we work so hard as an industry to see people leave at the back end. Um, in some cases, you know, we're churning almost our entire membership base per year in a club. Yeah. And thinking, why, why does that happen? You know, what is it that, that makes that happen? I think that that's kind of driven my journey within to, in, into the sort of product arena, you know, to, to hopefully try and, try and stop that, you know, in some way. So, you know, what, what we do with it within a sort of product environment and strategy of products is, is look at how we engage people, you know, so all the different sort of tools that we have and all the tools that we can potentially develop in the future, how do they engage people and how do they, you know, help people to stay within the business? How do they help people to, to build positive relationships with exercise? You know, so whether that's the a personal trainer is a, is a huge sort of, um, you know, Huge tool. <laughs> That's probably a bit not the right word, is it? Um, there's a few. To be fair, there's probably a few. There's probably a few tools at a personal trainer. You can't disagree with that one. Well, yeah, I'm not only going to say names, but uh, <laughs> you, can, you can beep them out, can't you? Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, personal trainer as an example. You know, knowing that a client that comes with a personal trainer stays with with, with a health club business for you know x amount longer than a person that doesn't. And a person that comes with a personal trainer and does group exercise stays even longer than the person that, that just does personal training. So, you know, all these things add up in, in sort of this product environment. So how do we promote each of these areas? How do we change a new member's mindset who walks into our, our club for the first time? How do we look at them in three years' time and, and see, right, this is the, the journey they've been on. They're still with us, and here's why because they've had a personal trainer, that personal trainer has given them a, a fantastic experience. They've fallen in love with, with exercise for, you know, the, 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 the sort of, they've embraced exercise rather than, you know, put up with the pain of exercise. Um, yeah. You know, they, they've taken part in group exercise. They've met lots of positive people. So they've built that community of people around them. Um, and, you know, they also come and, you know, they do, they might go for a coffee afterwards. You know, depending on the type of club, they might go for a swim on a Saturday. You know, so they start to build it as part of their lifestyle. So it becomes less about what they join for in the first place aesthetically and more about all the other emotional benefits that they get. So really, my, my sort of role is, is to, it's always been to look at that. And my sort of outlook on, on the industry is to always look through that lens of how do we make that happen? How do we make more people feel good about exercise? And if we do that, they will stay with us. And if they stay with us, we will help them achieve what the things that they wanted to achieve. And ultimately, that's why I got into the industry in the first place, you know. And it wasn't yeah. didn't start as a personal trainer to, to make people unhealthy and unhappy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, well, it's quite the opposite, isn't it? I think that the interesting thing that, that, that you said there with those two points is I, I, I'd imagine, and, and you'll probably be able to give us a bit more of a, an inside view, that, that those two points are, are pretty much just what you've, you've then scaled upon to uh, as you've progressed up that ladder to get into the position that you're in. Did you find much difference? I think even going from, from gym manager to regional manager into, into the sort of levels that you're at now, was there much difference along the way or, or what sort of things stand out in your mind as you've gone through those steps? Yeah, I think for, for me, it's always, it's always been important regardless of the role that I've been in to um, communicate my vision 
correctly. Yeah. You know, and I think as you kind of move up through levels, what you find is you get less and less time um, to support that vision. You know, so when you're in a club and you're having face-to-face contact with you know personal trainers or or fitness coaches on a day-to-day basis, you can really sort of um, you know reinforce that vision with people. You can reinforce that the you know why why they're doing things a certain way. And I think as you kind of move up um, through different roles, you you start to find you, you have less and less time to make that, that face-to-face interaction happen. Um, so what it's fine is, you know, you've, that, that vision has to be super, super clear. You know, yeah. that vision, that strategy has to be absolutely um, crystal clear to, to make it happen. You know, so what I've found is actually that that is such an important part of kind of what, what you do, um, you know, and it, it helps you sleep at night knowing that that vision's communicated, knowing that people are, who might, you may have never met or you may have met for only half an hour and making the right decisions because they're basing it on the right thought processes. So I remember working with, with Martin back in the day and, and you know, really standing up in, in sort of regional meetings. And, and I think, you know, I used to talk for quite a while, didn't I, mate? You know, I used to really <laughs> ramble on. <laughs> well, he's laughing away because I'm doing it now as well. Uh, <laughs> mate, this is what it's for, though, this. Yeah, you did, but... You could always see and understand what the vision was, and it's I've, I've I've been involved in that, and also I do that with me and Dan do that now with uh, yeah. managers that we support, with PTs that we support, with people that are running businesses. We're always always if the vision is clear, just like you said, um, they they will buy into it and they'll know what the they'll, they'll know what the need is, and then and then you can or the why they know exactly what the why is, and then it it gives you a sense of these are going to move along in the right direction because that it's so clear of what they, what they're, what they're aiming for. So yeah, I, I know, I know I was laughing, but it, it makes perfect sense to me. And it's something that me and Dan have taken away. And I talk yeah, just as much as you do as well, mate. So it's... I know. You're not going to get a word in here, Dan. Um, <laughs> no, I, you know what though? You're, you're absolutely right. I think it's, um, it comes back to, you know, those, those tiers of leadership, you know, leadership becomes really important when you're, you're sort of moving through, any sort of business and you know when you've got people that look to you you know leadership is your sort of qualities of what you bring become really really important you know those tiers of leadership you know why people follow you why people will listen to you become really important you know and if the the bottom level of, of leadership you know if people follow you because of your job title then actually you know when you're not there they're making their own sort of way you know and, and you know sometimes that can lead them astray sometimes that can be a real positive depending on kind of you know the decisions they're making but what you want to do as you move through is you want to work through those leadership players to the point where people are doing things um, for you because, you know, either they, you know, they completely buy into your vision and they've listened to you and they trust you or because of things that you've done for them, you know, so they actually think that you're, you're absolutely doing the right thing um, and they want to follow you to do it. And that's really, really important, you know, especially in this, this industry, like I said earlier, we're a people driven industry. So, you know, people need to, need to buy into you to be able to follow you. And, and, you know, a vision is great, but it means nothing if actually you listen to it and then you go, nah, so that and you ignore yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. I think that that base base level that you've just mentioned there, that, that lowest tier on, on the leadership scale is quite an interesting one to look at because I do think people tend to come into roles at times and they almost think, well, I, I've got this title now, so you should do as, as I'm asking or you should yeah. do rather than... Um, I think as you, as you learn or dependent on what your background's been like, especially if you have worked with a lot of people, then for me anyway, you go straight in with that empathy piece and you're like, right, I, I, I'm genuinely here to help and support you. Like, I, I'm your number one go-to for support. That's the reason that I'm in the, this position. I'm not in it because of a job title. I'm here to help you and to support you. So I think anyone that is maybe looking to transition from fitness coach or PT or, or coming into that, if they were to take something away, definitely that one is massive. Um, like don't just rely on, on your job title, understand your communication piece, understand that you're there as a support tool, understand that ultimately you're there to serve the, the people that are, uh, are reporting into you because then that allows them to be the best versions of themselves and then your business grows and it, it just rolls on from there, doesn't it? So yeah, yeah, massive, massive, massive shout again. Um, cool. Yeah. So quick, yeah, go on. No, no, like, you know what I, I was just going to say, I, you know, I, I 100% agree with you. I think, especially as you're moving, moving through layers, you know, there's, there's, there's a vulnerability piece that, yeah. that comes to play, you know, and, yeah. and sometimes that can be a real positive thing, you know, showing that you are, you know, you, you are in a position and you are relying on other people to, to help you and support you 
um, especially when you're in new roles, you know, you walk into a new role and, you know, there are people there that, that do know more than you. So that vulnerability piece is, is really, really important. You know, I, I was once, a thing that sticks in my mind is I had a manager once who, who kind of said to me, you know what, if you were ever stuck on, on the motorway at, at four o'clock on a Sunday morning and you had one phone call, 2% battery on your mobile, one phone call, and you could only ring somebody that works for you, would they pick up the phone? Not only would they pick up the phone, would they pick up the phone and would they come and get you? Mm. And that's kind of stuck with me, you know, kind of going, you know what, I do want people to, to be like that. I do want my teams to be like that. I do want them to, one, be able to pick up the phone to me, but me to be able to pick up the phone to them. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. So I think that's, it's really important that we, you know, especially like I say, as a piece of advice, if you're moving through the industry, you know, keep, keep humble, keep humble and stay vulnerable and, and rely on people around you, you know, lean on the people around you to, kind of support you know in, especially in, in you know when I've moved through to the role I'm in there's so many different layers of kind of um, you know all specialisms you know for example swimming is, is one thing that I've, I've overseen in, in sort of a, you know in my career I've overseen swimming lessons I've tried to promote people to do more swimming get in the pool more if ever you've seen me in the pool I look like I look like a, I, I don't know honestly. It's, it's I'm, I'm exactly the same. My best mate describes me swimming as someone drowning in a sink. That's what it looks like when I'm swimming. That's yeah. how cool it is. Yeah. It's shocking. Mate, Absolutely you know shocking. I, I, I honestly, honestly, in my mind, once upon a time, I thought I can do this. I thought back to when I was at school, and I thought, you know what? I've got my 25 meter badge. I can do this. And I actually bought the hat. <laughs> and I bought the goggles, and the, I, I got in the pool, and I was like, right, I'm going to do this. And I literally got halfway up, halfway up the length, and I just like, it must have been about 30 minutes later when I got halfway up. I was like, what am I doing? <laughs> the worst thing the is, the, the worst thing is when Betty and Deidre just absolutely sail past you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, what yeah, are What's going on? Well. Yeah. I'm going to chat and tut him because you're taking up the length. <laughs> <laughs> no. So, yeah, it's... Uh, it, <laughs> I think that, that for me, is, it's important, you know, when you've got, you've got things that you're not good at and, you know, swimming for me was one of them. So I had to rely on the people around me who were experts to, to kind of help me and guide me. What I was the expert at was taking the information and processing that information and, you know, coming out with a plan at the end of it. I didn't yeah. know the, the first thing about, you know, how to do the best butterfly stroke or, you know, how to get more people swimming a little bit longer. It didn't, I, I just didn't know. Um, but the experts around me did, and I think that's you know really important, especially when you're you know in your world for PTs, you know to look around and find out right, who is my expert, who are the people that I'm surrounding myself with, how do I draw their information, and then take it and assimilate it to what I want it to be. You know? Yeah, yeah and I, I think that's one of the key, one of the key skills within leadership that being able. I mean, we talked about it on other podcasts, haven't we, mate? About being able to listen and seek and understand what other people know and use their skill set to support and build what you're trying to build as the team leader or the manager or whatever it's 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 something that's for me is a skill just as just as big of a skill as any of the others that you need to have as a manager yeah, being able to take on somebody else's opinion listen to it digest it and then use it and utilize it some really strongly to help the cause or help to get to the vision what you're looking for yeah, of course it is, mate. And it's Just translatable as well, isn't it? You know, you yeah. can you can take that skill anywhere. You know, I spent a little bit of time out of the industry and, and that skill was still massively, massively applicable for, for you know the, the businesses that I was consulting with. It was still about asking the right questions, finding the right people who can give you the right answers and assimilating that information to understand actually what are the next steps. You know, so it's it's a really important skill to have regardless of what, what position you're in, because yeah. it can serve you well throughout your, your whole career and in your whole life, you know. Yeah, I think a question that just jumped up, jumped out to me then was um, almost, do you think that's just something that comes natural to you or do you think that's something you've had to, to work at and, and educate yourself on and develop over a period of time? Because I think uh, just, just thinking to some of the managers that, that we've spent time with and work with that, that tend to have a little bit of a mental block and think, well, this is where I'm at now and this is, this is me, this is my position. Yeah. Have you developed that or is it something you've, you found quite natural to you? Do you know what? It's, it's probably a bit of both, Dan. Um, you know, I think, I think when I was younger, you know, I was a lot more headstrong. It was very my way or the highway. So, you know, I did have that, that point of that being pointed out to me and, and having to really take that kick in the nuts, you know, swallow it, you know, go and, yeah. go and sit in a corner for three weeks and sulk because I was told that I, I was wrong. Um, so, you know, absolutely, I've had to learn that along the way. Um, but I think naturally, I'm always quite inquisitive, I'm always asking the why question, 
you know, I'm always asking why is that, you know, I think there's a, a, it's a it's of course, I think it's Socratic sort of a questioning, you know, that, that always try and, you know, boil a, a sort of main question down with whys, yeah. you know, so I've always yeah, been yeah. that type of character that always asks those questions and, and kind of tries to boil them down. Um, so I've always found myself being, being quite good at, at asking those, but absolutely, I've had to learn when to, to kind of park my own opinions and yeah. listen to other people or, you know, when you're taking that information in to be humble enough to go, actually, I was talking shit for, for 10 years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you were ab- absolutely, you were sort of saying the right thing and, you know, we may have butted heads for 10 years, but I, now I'm bearing down to you. Um, you know, oh. we're in that industry, aren't we? We're, we're an opinion-driven industry. So you yeah. know, you're always going to get people who, who know more than you and, you know, have different opinions and sometimes they're right and sometimes you're right and you know you just hope that you're right a few more times than they are <laughs> <laughs> and then you, and then remind them about it after one of those <laughs> <Keep notes. Yeah. laughs> that is that yeah i, I agree 100 percent. i think that whole um in like being curious is is massive isn't it and i suppose that gives you a chance to review what you've done before and then make a, a better more informed decision down the road and i think you it's okay being being natural towards that, but definitely, in my opinion, anyway, I think it is a skill that people can learn and can adapt. And if it's not necessarily naturally your your skill, or you don't tend to lean towards that that blue energy of your insights, then um, it might take a little bit more more of your um, your, your will, I suppose, um, which, which might tire you out. But even then, the, the results hopefully off the back of that will be will be better for you, your business, your the people you serve, and etc. Yeah. Good. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. I think I think I mentioned earlier my my sort of insights profile naturally sways me towards sort of introversion rather than sort of out there, which is a little bit of a you know people think of people in the fitness industry as you know out there bright yellow waving hands being really loud, um, which absolutely you know you have to be at times, mm-hmm. and I think a really important skill is being able to understand one who you are and where you draw that energy from, and two being able to change your hat very quickly. Yeah. You know, so I know when I when I have to present and I stand up and present for you know two three hours at a time on a topic, or you know I'll, I'll stand in front of crowded rooms and, and talk to people about things. Absolutely, I have to do it, and I, you know I really really enjoy doing it, but I know it completely wipes me out afterwards. Yeah, you know you put yeah. me in a dark room on my own for three hours, and I'm absolutely fine. So <laughs> I think what's really really important is to understand kind of where you draw that energy from, yeah. um, and understand that actually that doesn't define you that's not solely who you are that's just where you draw your energy from you know this this idea that, that an introvert is you know the guy that sits in playing on the pc 19 hours a day um it's, it's you know it, it's it's not true it's outdated it's all about where you draw energy from so yeah it's really really important for me that you know people understand who they are but then also understand they can be other people they can be somebody else yeah, yeah that's massive for me coming into the industry. That was a, a, a big learning curve for me. I think I've, I might have mentioned it again on, on one of the previous episodes, definitely in the intro that we did. But um, you, you do look around and you're like, wow, all of these people are all singing, all dancing, jazz hands everywhere. And I'm quite happy to to sit and just internalize everything and try and work it out from, from what I'm seeing. So you if you and it probably goes back even more so to what we were saying earlier about people not understanding themselves. I was 17 when I came into the industry, which is very, very young. Um, so you are almost still trying to fit in and, and, and find your own way, and, and you're not quite sure of, of who you are yourself. So, um, yeah, that's definitely well worth taking away for those that are listening. Be be open and honest, and, and don't be shy in in who you are, and, and that doesn't necessarily define the path that you're going to take because you're going to have skills that other people won't. and and vice versa, as you said there, you can lean on people down the road that have got skills that, that you've not got and find the outcome that, that's best to move the business forwards or, or your business forwards or where whatever position it is that you're in. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Cool. I think okay. that's great, great, great advice. Cool. Um, so yeah, we, we've kind of got, we, we've took you through to, into your GM role. You started to work in, in different clubs. You, you mentioned that you've worked in think tanks and, and delivered multi-million pound refurbs. How was all of that yeah. sort of stuff for you? How did you come into those, those roles? How did those projects come up? And you know what? It's, um, it, it was, it was interesting. So my time within, within Total Fitness, um, you know, it was, that's when a lot of those things really started um, to happen. You know, it's, it was, 
sort of the point when I was within Total Fitness where I was asking questions all the time. I was asking, why is this happening? What, what could we do differently here? And I think, you know, there's some, some, some great people gave me an opportunity. And I think sometimes that's, that's just as important as knowing as much as it is, you know, being in the right place and asking the right questions to the right people. Um, and I got given the opportunity to, you know, take on that mantle and, and start to look at, you know, the, the way that we um, interact with people, the way our gym floors looked, our whole experience, you know, what were we doing with new members? How were we kind of supporting them through what our group exercise product looked like? Um, and that's kind of where that, that whole thing came about, you know, that, that sort of uh, looking at, at the experience that the member has of walking into the club. And, you know, back then our clubs were looking a little bit tired. So we, we, we had to look at the environment before we could even look at anything else. So, you know, we managed that and, uh, you know, we managed to, to, to sort of update the clubs and, then, you know, make them look a little bit more inviting, look at the flow, look at the way people move through the clubs, look at the kind of exercises that they were doing. Um, and then we could start to look at everything else. So, you know, in the, in the background, we could start to look at all the other, all the other bits that, that add up to, to keeping a member in a club for a little bit longer and helping them achieve, achieve their goals. So, you know, the first grade, you know, group exercise, a new member journey, all those things started to come together. Um, and I think that was, a, again, another, another real learning point for me was being able to compartmentalise and manage those, those multiple processes. Yeah. You know, it's, I think that there was a point where I think I, I was going home at one point and I was absolutely pulling my hair out because I was thinking, I'm never going to, I'm never going to make, make headway. You know, I've, I've got a thousand different battlefronts to try and win. On. And you know, unless, if I focus on this one, I get flanked over this side. And if I move yeah. over to that side, I get flanked from behind. And if I focus on them, actually, I get I get bombs coming over from here. <laughs> um, so it's really, really important. You know, I really learned it in in you know those couple of years to 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 say, compartmentalize it and look at, at projects in a way that you know I could quite easily move from one project to the next. Um, you know quite seamlessly because I'd have it all organized. I'd have my time planned on there. I'd get to a certain point that I'm moving on to this project now. And, and you know, it's not going to fall apart if I leave it for a couple of days. It's not going to all go wrong. I'm going to move over. I'm going to work on this now. Um, you know, so that, that sort of project management side, project management skills, those organizational time management skills, um, really, really prevalent. And, you know, I thought I was a good time manager when I was a PT, you know, because I had a diary. And I thought, yeah. you know, I'm sitting like, yeah, I'm fine. You know, I'm, I'm up at half six in the morning. I've got my first client at seven. I have my diary blocked out. Um, and then, you know, as I've moved through, I thought, actually, my time management is, is shocking. And I've yeah. really had to work on that really, really to the point where, um, you know, I, I, I now kind of start to plan ahead by weeks, months. In some instances, I'm planning ahead what, what I'm thinking is going to happen in the next six months to a year. You know, so, um, yeah, time management is really, really, really key. To the point where even my little boy that was that was due and then was born during lockdown came on the exact day he was due. So I think it was, <laughs> that was handy. That was I, handy. I must be doing something right. <laughs> <laughs> we, to be fair, we went for uh, uh, our little girl, we, we went for a caesarean just so we, could, we knew exactly what day she was going to be born on. How many fucking, we weren't that organised. That is, that, is, that is some blue energy through and through. <laughs> <laughs> Is my 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 uh, insight is, is yellow red, and I put uh, we booked a section in for, for our little girl, and she came before the section. <laughs> so that, that tells you kind of like what my life's a little bit like. out straight away. <laughs> Say that again. I said she I just. I said she'd be late, Martin. What's well, yeah. Mate? To be fair, I thought she'd be late. <laughs> 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 right uh, yeah cool to definitely that i think that project management and time management piece is is massive isn't it and as you yeah. as you said there being able to move from one project 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 if i can spit it out from one to the other without thinking that the other one's going to burn down is, is probably quite a tough thing to get your head around initially because you almost are like right and i think a lot of people are i've got to spin these plates rather than let me get that yeah. one to a point where i can seamlessly move to the next one and it will almost look after itself for at least the next couple of days so that I can put all of my energy into this project over here. I think yeah, of definitely well worth um, taking away that. And I think something probably to open up a little bit more on there is, is those member journeys that you've mentioned. I remember a, a regional manager saying to me that, that most members' journeys are, are, are very different because we're going to get people that 
that join the gyms and some will only be there for group X. So their journey around your club will be very different for someone who's a, an avid free weights user. So that the, the points that they go along as they, they travel through your club is, is going to be very, very different on, on both of those fronts. And you almost want to make those journeys the best that they can possibly be, regardless of what, what that member individually goes through. Yeah. Um, wh- how have you found that sort of uh, like developing that and, and, and improving it and, and then implementing it, I suppose? How have you found that? Yeah, do you know what? It's been um, it, it, it it's been a really interesting exercise over you know ten years to to look at member journeys. Um, you know, it's back when I think very similar to what you said there. But when I started looking at member journeys, it was very much about the physical. It was very much about you know work, when they come in, do they turn left or do they turn right? And yeah. if they turn right, do they then turn left or right again? And it was very much that that sort of physical sort of movement around the club. Um, I think what, what I've found in the last you know ten years or so is that you know we've we've started to to sort of move a lot more to to unique sort of experiences, unique member journeys, like you just said, and that's that's not always about the physical. You know, a lot of that can be supported you know with technology. A lot of that is supported with um, you know the the perception of what they 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 sort of see and feel rather than what they actually experience mm. around the club. So. You know, it's, it's been really, really sort of interesting for me to, to look over those years and kind of go, well, what points when we intervene, do we make a difference? You know, so if we intervene in the first two days and we, you know, we talk to them about X, Y, and Z, does that make a difference to them? And, you know, some people it doesn't, some people it doesn't. And then we learn from that and we just go, great, for those people, we'll intervene on yeah. day three. For yeah. these people, these people need this and they need yeah. intervention on day five, day six, day seven, day 38, whatever it may be. Um, and I think that's that's been a real exciting learning point, and that's for our industry. It's, it's kind of where you know I, I've seen us getting better and better over over the years at delivering those unique experiences. And you know we're still a little bit behind. You know, don't get me wrong. You know, uh, you know we're behind some other industries. You know, you look at, at retail uh, as an example. You know, Tesco. Tesco know what I'm going to buy before I even go in bloody Tesco. You know, <laughs> yeah. Even if I've never bought it before, they know I'm going to buy it. Mm. Um, which is crazy. So, you know, we are still a little bit behind being able to understand those behaviors, understand, you know, what are people doing and what drives them and how do we sort of promote things differently? How do the, how does, how can we get to a point where they know I want to take part in group exercise before I've ever taken part in any group exercise before? Yeah. That's yeah. A, if we can get to that point, our industry suddenly is, is you know, miles ahead of where it is um, and, you know, where, we're making real impact on retention. We're really getting people excited about, about exercise. We're getting people participating more. And we're closing that that back door. You know, it's been a bit bittersweet over the last few months for me to see, you know, start of lockdown, more people doing more. You know, I think it was the highest percentage of people doing their prescribed 150 minutes a week of moderate exercise. You know, the highest has ever been. Um, but it took a pandemic to do it. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's mad, isn't it? No, but I, I think that that'll, that will help. And especially just touching on what you just said there, you've got so many PTs that we've been supporting um, for, from all companies um, that are now looking at doing, they're doing Group X on Zoom classes and they've mm. got slots booked through the day. So anybody that you're trying to pull within any member journey now will have an idea of Group Exercise already because they've already been doing it at home because they've got no kit they don't know what they're going to do so they just book onto that with these with all the pts that have just started to run that as a product that they never had before so for the journey that when the clubs reopen again they're going to look to group x straight away aren't they oh yeah you would hope like i say it's exposure it's just a it is a bit of a shame that the exposure came at the at the sort of detriment of having no other option you know the the you know, I would hope that, you know, in the, in the future, what we'd find is that exposure comes from people's decision and, and we yeah. make our our access to these areas, our barrier to entry so low that yeah. actually people think, you know, absolutely, I can go and walk into a group X or I can absolutely have a, a personal training session. And, you know, my dad, as we mentioned earlier, can go and have a, a personal training session because he's not fearful of being like the wild west where the doors swing open and everyone stares at him <laughs> yes it's you know, crazy so. that you say that mate because you you were saying about your dad before and we deliver uh, these courses for pts like foundation courses uh, and it's like an introduction and the base of starting to build your business as a pt yeah. 
and I like you use your dad I use my mum and uh, like I use her by name and I say if she was to yeah. walk into the gym what would her what would her first thought be of this club and you as an individual stood there stacked with the tightest top on she'd run a mile and we, we, I, we use that all the time just to get them to understand do you know what I mean and I think I think that it does get missed doesn't it with PTs that are coming into the industry and stuff like that yeah, of course it does, mate. I, I, I use the exact same example and have done for years of, you know, a new member walking in the club and what's the, what's the piece of kit that they recognise? It's yeah. a treadmill. So yeah. what do they do? They go and jump on a treadmill and, you know, they spend 20 minutes on a treadmill. Now, I don't know about you guys, but if I spend 20 minutes on a treadmill, I, I'm, I'm feeling it for the next four and a half weeks. You know, it's awful. <laughs> Absolutely awful. Yeah. You know, not, not even, not even, not even necessarily, not even necessarily feeling it in your legs, but just feeling it in your soul because it just breaks <laughs> yeah. out of you, doesn't it? It's like, yeah, it kills yeah, it me you. And you know, I, I use the example of, um, you know, where do people get this perception of, of exercise from? Where does it actually come from? Mm. And you know, a lot of time, it's for, for me, in my opinion, anyway, a lot of it comes back to kind of what you did as a as a kid. Mm. You know, so what yeah. you did as a kid is, is you know, sometimes. Everyone's got a, a, a sort of really terrible story about PE at school, haven't they? When they got made to run around fields, when yeah. they got made to kind of do it in their, in their underpants because they forgot their kit. And, and, you know, that for me is, is kind of how I perceive people feeling when they come into our clubs. You know, if they just go and jump on a treadmill for 20 minutes, I kind of think, are, are they perceiving exercise in the way that, you know, 10-year-old Craig, when he was running around those fields, absolutely hating life, is feeling? And if they yeah. are then actually, you know, we, we've got to in some way intervene and show them that they can, they can enjoy the movement. They don't have to embrace the pain, if that makes and, sense. And that, that journey isn't going to be long. It's, they're not going to stay in the, in, in the club for long, are they? are not going to remain a member for long if that's their experience and the journey that they have. Jump on a treadmill, reminiscent about when they was a kid at PE. They're not going to last long because nobody wants to be tortured. They're there, so then after a while... Oh, Mate, I challenge any PT here now who doesn't run on treadmills to, to actually follow a, a treadmill workout program for four weeks <laughs> and see how hard it is. It is yeah. bloody hard, mate. It's really mm. bloody hard. Um, but that's the, that's the journey a lot, of, uh, a lot of these members go on. Um, and that's where we, like say, as, as, a, as, as people, as personal trainers, as, as managers, whatever we are, we've got to understand that that's, they're the kind of people we've got to talk to. You know, we've got to talk to those people. We've got to help those people. Um, you know, they're... They're the ones that I always use the example and, and people kind of really struggle to, to sort of see, well, how, how am I going to do that? How am I going to talk to that person? You know, they have no goals. They have nothing they want to achieve, particularly. Um, you know, they, they're not massively motivated. Why as a personal trainer would I talk to that person? Well, the reason you talk yeah. to that person is because if you go and actually engage with them, if you can change their mindset to, to loving exercise, if you can, um, you know, change their life in a way, they will be your biggest promoter for the next, you know, yeah. 30, 40 years. You will, you will be the, the person that changed their life. And it's raving fans, isn't it? Exactly that. Like you're creating raving fans. So, uh, and the more raving fans you've got, the more you, your reputation is going to build and the more people are going to be drawn to your business, whether that's, I think we mentioned this a, a number of times, but people so often only go and have that engagement piece or they only go and have that conversation because they want something directly from it, which is usually a paid client, rather than looking at it as the big picture that this person might know 10 other people that are interested in PT. They might not be themselves because they might, for whatever reason, uh, that could be. But if I go and help that individual, and it might even just be showing them to where the changing rooms are, um, allowing them to, to walk through me, showing them what, what we have to offer in terms of services in, in that area, setting up their padlock for them, helping them put their kit away, and then leading them back out onto the, the gym floor to show them how to use kit that they've never used before. That experience for that individual then allows them to go and speak to 10 other people that are, are now interested in your business and coming to speak to you straight from the off. Um, but again, I think that's where um, service is, is massively important as well as product. Obviously, as a head of product, you talk about Group X, you talk about um, all, of, all of the PTs that you have, etc. cetera. Um, but then, then providing that service around that and building it out into the services is what's going to make the difference, isn't it? And I suppose, as, as you've mentioned there, that whole um, engagement piece is, is the underlying element of it, isn't it? Yeah, of course, it's, it's, it's that vision again, isn't it, Dan? It's that vision, yeah. you know, what, what, what trend do you want to be? And, yeah. you know, if, you, if, you're, if you're building your business on the foundations of being a transactional trainer, yeah. you know, the kind of will, will swap time for money. 
then yeah. you know don't be surprised in 10 15 years that your business doesn't move forward you know, yeah you've not you've not created those raving fans you know if you're building your business on the right foundation of this is what i want to be this is why i want to be like this and actually i'm going to push my vision to people and, and get people to buy into me then all of a sudden like you know we talked about the leadership scale you're moving up people are listening yeah. to you yeah you know yeah. your business is built on a, on a great foundation you've got a great referral system in place you've got people who, who effectively um you know pay you you for your time because they love the experience of spending time with you not yeah. because they're trying to get a beach body for, for the next yeah. trip yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. That, that's that's a real a real key part for anybody starting as a pt is, is that foundational element is really really important if they're going to look back in 10 years time and say this is how i built my business and this is why yeah yeah, hundred percent. And I think that that's transferable across not just to from from PT, but into gym managers and into even other sectors and other industries that are any anyone starting a business really that I, I suppose is is that that level that you need to to get set up first, isn't it? Yeah, of course. Simon Sinek's why, isn't it? The golden one. Yes, yes, <laughs> Mr. Sinek. Love him. To be fair, his books. You've got him going now. Look at him. Oh, mate, you set me off. You set me off, mate. That's another three-hour episode now. I'm never, I'm say, never sure if it's Sinek or Sinek. I say Sinek. If I'm wrong, then I've been wrong for however many years. <laughs> you mean? Um, if we're so pissed off, we'll be blocking you on Instagram. <laughs> Don't say that. I'll be, it'll be me sat in the room with the strop on me for the next three days. Uh, cool. <laughs> Amazing. No, yeah, really, really great insight. We, we, we wrap the episodes up and we move into it to uh, a bit more questions that are based around fun and, and getting a bit more of an insight into yourself and, and yep. not so serious, really. So if you want to go with the first one, Mark, that'd be top, mate. This will be good, this one. I reckon they'll give us some good answers here. Uh, so you've, you're having a dinner party and you can invite three guests, alive or dead. Which three are you bringing and why? That's the, that's the hardest question I've had all day. It was <laughs> <laughs> the alive or dead bit there, John. Like, <laughs> no, well, no, I don't really mean that corpse, corpse on the table, is it? No, I don't <laughs> mean the corpse. I just mean you can. <laughs> um, oh, mate, do you know what? Let's have a look. Do you know what? The, the, I've been really, I've been watching a what, lot of what, uh, what Elon Musk is doing. I'd love to have him around the table. Yeah. You know, if you ever. If you, if you look at what he's doing with, with Tesla, SpaceX, and, and kind of looking to, to change the game, I'd love to be able to pick his brain. So, yeah. you know, try and get him, try and get him drunk, um, you know, pick his brains about what the next big thing he's doing. So, yeah, he'd be... And then, the and then just, go, just go and buy a load of shares in it then, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, mate, I was going to say, just, yeah, just go and, go and settle my old thing, but I'm, oh. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not sure I've got the funds to compete with Tesla. <laughs> Well, yeah, so I think, I think he'd be really interesting to have around. Um, who else, who else, who else? You know what, I'd, I'd probably go for a couple of chaos people, to be honest. I'd probably go for, like, Kurt Cobain, you know, someone like that, just to help me get Elon drunk, maybe Noel Gallagher, <laughs> Liam Gallagher, someone like that. Um, yeah, you know, yeah, I think those, those guys would be a, be a pretty fun... Pretty fun three, so yeah, yeah. You, well, you've got someone there that you can pick their brains, and then you've got two people that are probably going to ruin most of your brain, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've got it, one so. that's going to add some brain cells and take them away. Yeah, cool. Okay, so you've, you've got your guests, uh, we've now obviously got to serve them something. So, any meals, starters, main, and desserts, what would you choose, and why would you go for them? Mate, do you think do you think Kurt Cobain and Liam Gallagher have three gold meals? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not too sure if they do. If I'm honest with you, it'll I be it'll be doubles. three courses of drinks then, won't it? What beers you yeah. got? Yeah, yeah, I think it's a, just a just a Viagra and a whiskey chaser. I think it'll be sound. Sad. Yeah, you will. <laughs> <laughs> sound. <laughs> um, oh, mate, I don't know. You know, I'm, I'm a bit of a foodie, so I, I, I I'm gonna kind of struggle to pick something. Um, <sighs> if I would think. You know what, for nostalgic reasons, go, you can't go wrong with a prawn cocktail start. <laughs> you know I mean? Proper, yeah, yeah, definitely that. Proper, proper Christmas Day, 1993, you know, a prawn cocktail, iceberg lettuce, you know, the full, the full, full <laughs> shabab. It's a good show. Okay, nodding away there, nodding <laughs> away. Um, yeah, so, so that, that's, that's going to be my starter. Um, you know, a roast dinner, you can't go wrong with a roast dinner. Um, and then probably something quite, extra, let's go for something quite extravagant for, for a pudding. You know, something a little bit, a little bit of a uh, pizzazz, what can we have? 
I don't know, it's got a lot of glitter and sparkles and all sorts of stuff. Show Some that, kind show of that, show that yellow side. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, proper sundae or something like that, but three different ice creams and sparkles, sparkles on it. And, and yeah. well away. Just need someone it, to sing happy line. birthday. <laughs> yeah. well away. Uh, next one, go on, Mark. Uh, and the last one is, is have you got more? Uh, well, this one is if you're stranded on a desert island and yeah. you can only take one album and one album only, what are you taking and why? Uh, mate, uh, Paul Weller, Stanley Road. Mm. Paul Weller, my old man, to be fair. Why? He's such a yeah, mate, I, I, Do you know what? I, I've been I, I, I'm a bit of a, a sort of well, a fan I've been for absolutely years and years. Um, you know, the whole sort of mod thing fascinates me. The whole mod culture absolutely fascinates me. Um, and you know, I'm not going to show you around my house because you'd be you'd be freaked out. I've got a room upstairs. It's like an attic room. It's a bit of a boys' den, and there's you know there's there's a pole on a canvas and a sign something. All those weird things that that kind of you don't want to you, you don't want to delve into those dark corners. <laughs> right, mind. Do you want to, do you want to keep those? I'll keep those to myself. I'll keep those. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you for the man. For the best. Amazing. No, that's great. I really, really appreciate you jumping on, Craig. I know you've had, had some busy busy times, especially with the little one and stuff. So really appreciate you jumping on. It's been great to, to take some stuff away. I'm sure there's plenty that the listeners will have been able to, to go away and input into their journeys and their careers. So again, massive, massive thanks for jumping on. Uh, subscribers, if you if you are listening, you'll get an update straight straight through from the episode. But if you've not subscribed, click down in the bottom corner. Uh, and those updates will come through to you every single week when we release an episode. Thanks again for listening, uh, and we'll catch you all soon. Have a great day.